And everybody said, I welcome everyone tonight in Jesus' name. I want to appeal to you that this is the headquarters church and your coming for the Tuesday leadership development is very important, not only for you, for us, for all our members, and for the church at large. It's from here we transmit to all our leaders all over the world. And your presence is very significant. I'm happy, I'm grateful, and I thank you for being able to come tonight. And of course, being able to come every Tuesday. I know the road in Lagos, but God will reward you. The extra time you spend on the road, you'll be surprised of the abundance of blessings of God upon you in Jesus' name. I learned from one of our group coordinators that the time I wasn't around when uh, you met in various groups, perhaps, each group would have had about 120, 130 if we came over here. But in meeting in the group, that is some groups together, there were more than 600, if I remember correctly. Judging from that and distributing that to all our districts and groups, it means that we have a minimal number coming on Tuesday to the headquarters. It's okay for me if you want me to come to the uh, maybe one group or one old district, and then we transmit from there. I can sacrifice, I can do that, but the body dynamics and the body ministry that we have together in, at the headquarters here, we will miss that. So let's sacrifice, we will do it. But do you prefer we, I come to the local Okay, so please, uh, I appreciate you and I appreciate the church. Let's put more effort. We will. I said we will. The Lord will bless you abundantly. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for what you have called us to tonight. We thank you for the penetration you are giving us to hearts to communities. And we thank you for the inspiration you are bringing to us. We are asking, Lord, open our eyes of understanding tonight. Help us to perceive, help us to understand, help us to discern, so that we'll be more effective in the work of the Lord in Jesus' name. I pray for all your children, all your sons and daughters, all our ministers, brothers and sisters, that Lord, power will reside in each of them in Jesus' name. They will not fail. They will not faint. And nothing will defeat or destroy them as they in the battlefield of the Lord in Jesus' name. Equip us more tonight. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Let's come to First John chapter 4, and I'm reading from verse 1, First John chapter 4, verse 1, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Verse 3, every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. This is that spirit of Antichrist, whereof ye have heard that it should come. And even now already is it in the world. Verse 6, 
we are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth us not. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Tonight we are speaking on the subject, our vigilance and discernment of the spirit at work. Our vigilance as ministers, as leaders in the household of faith, as the shepherds that direct the sheep in the fold of Christ. We need vigilance and we need discernment to know the spirit at work. In First Timothy chapter 3, First Timothy chapter 3, reading from verse 2. A bishop, that's what just means, a minister, a preacher, a leader, an elder, a pastor. A bishop then must be blameless, the husband of one wife, vigilant. Vigilant. We must be vigilant. But we don't know if we don't know what we're searching for, what we're looking for, even if we're vigilant, we will not be able to protect the people of God. Ezekiel chapter 44, verse 23. Ezekiel chapter 44, reading from verse 23. Ezekiel is telling us by the word of the Lord in verse 23, and they shall teach my people the difference between the holy and profane and cause them to discern between the unclean and the clean. We ministers and leaders, we pastors and teachers should teach so convincingly and should teach so clearly that we make the people of God in that verse 23 discern before the truth between the truth and error, between the clean and the unclean, between the acceptable and the unacceptable. So as I said, today we're looking at the message, our vigilance and discernment of the spirit at work. Somebody is evangelizing, somebody is preaching, somebody is praying, somebody is prophesying, somebody is working miracle, somebody is uh, giving a word of supernatural power and energy. We need to know the spirit at work. We shouldn't look at the end result, at the final result, and say that's it, God is at work. We must discern the spirit at work, our vigilance and discernment of the spirit at work. Four things I'm looking at. Number one, re-examining the devastating influence of active servants. Re-examining the devastating influence of active servants in our nation as well as as on the continent, Africa, and beyond Africa, religious people, preachers, pastors, prophets, are very active, and they are active in their local congregation, they are active in the community and country, they are active on the internet and their website, they are active as they send forth their messages, they have strategy and they also have passion and you can see them as they move in uh, giving out their messages you can see the passion that they have but you know what the lord has told us come back to first john chapter 4 and we're reading from verse 1 first john chapter 4 reading from verse 1 it says beloved believe not every spirit but try the spirits, examine the spirits, whether they are of God. Because many false prophets 
are gone out into the world very active and they act and they preach and they do everything like the servants of god hereby know ye the spirit of god every spirit that confesseth that jesus christ is come in the flesh is of god every spirit that confesseth that jesus is the christ the christ of god sent by god and he came in the flesh he was existing from all eternity before he was born by virgin mary and every spirit that confesses how he came that he came through virgin mary and it was the incarnation of christ who was god and is still god who became man and while he was god and became man he still remained god even though he was man and then he lived a perfect life he went to the cross of calvary he died for us every spirit that confesses that jesus came in the flesh and affirms and confirms everything he did when he was in the flesh that is of god look at verse 5 they are of the world that is the preachers who do not confirm what jesus came to do and the totality the entirety of what jesus came to do all those people of the world therefore speak they of the world they claim to the pastors they speak more of the world than they speak of heaven they speak more of the world than they speak of christ they speak of the world of the things the worldly people want to hear it says they speak of the world and the world hears them the world expects them to speak and they expect them to speak what they want to hear and the world heareth the way of god in verse 6 he that knoweth god heareth us he that is not of god heareth not us it says you shouldn't be embarrassed you shouldn't be unhappy because some worldly minded people do not want to hear you it just shows who they are they are not of god therefore they hear us not hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error you know what the lord is telling us to do through john the beloved re-examine all the active servants that come to our church that come to other churches all the active preachers that want to get our attention we shouldn't be gullible we should examine them to see whether they are god or they are not of god revelation chapter 2 reading from verse 2 revelation chapter 2 verse 2 i know thy works and thy, and thy labor and thy patience and how canst not bear them which are evil and thou hast tried them that's what the lord is telling us to do try them and this church in ephesus thou hast tried them and then it goes on to say which say they are apostles and are not and you have found them liars you will try every spirit how do you discover them how do you know which one is of god and which one is not of god isaiah chapter 8 reading from verse 20 isaiah chapter 8 verse 20 to the law and to the testimony if they speak not according to this word it is because there's no light in them you try the people that say they're speaking by the holy ghost they're speaking by the scripture they're speaking as servants of god who are sent forth by god 
they claim to be apostles or they claim to be prophets or they claim to be God's evangelists or they claim to be pastors and teachers, you will try them by the word to the law and to the testimony. If they speak not according to this word, it is because there's no light, there's no truth in them. In Second Corinthians chapter 11, Second Corinthians chapter 11. Here we're reading from verse 13. Second Corinthians 11, verse 13. For such are false apostles. They say they're apostles. You try them, and you try them by the word of God, to the law and to the testimony. That means to the whole of the Old Testament, put them on the balance. And in the New Testament, put them on the balance. Compare what they say, compare what they teach with the words of the Lord Jesus Christ to the law and to the testimony. If they speak not according to this, it is because there's no truth and there's no light in them. And it says in that verse 13, for such apostles, deceitful workers transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great, it is no great thing if his ministers, those who call them apostles, they're actually ministers of Satan. They're actually servants of Satan. They're actually running errands for Satan. They are using God's house to work for Satan. They are using God's name to work for Satan. And they are using the pulpit of the church, which Christ has established. They are using it to serve Satan. They are using the privilege they have and the well wishes of the people, innocent people, that look at them as people of God, apostles of Christ, and they are using that to serve Satan. Verse 15, therefore, it is no great sin if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end is, will be, shall be according to their works. What do these people do? How do you know them? As you try them, as you test them, as you examine them. In 2 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 17. 2 Corinthians 2 verse 17. For we are not as many which corrupt the word of God. Which corrupt the word of God. How do you know? that they are not serving God? How do you know they are not faithful to God? How do you discern and detect the spirit that works in them, even though they appear to have influence, influence over the world, influence in the country, influence in the community? They corrupt the word of God. They hide the word of God from the people in those uh, dark ages, the Catholic Church will not allow their people to read the Bible directly. The priest will just tell them what he thinks is the Word of God. They will not read. They cannot read the Bible directly themselves, and it is the interpretation the priest gives them that they will accept. The churches of today have all switched, almost all of them, to that same style. Even the Pentecostal preachers, they will read a verse of the Bible, and they will not allow the people to understand. They will not look at the context of that verse. They will not look at what comes before that verse or after that verse, and they will tell them what they want to tell them. And the Apostle Paul says, we are not like that. You will not be like that. 
we are not as many which corrupt the word of God, but as of sincerity, but as of God, in the sight of God, we preach, we speak in Christ. It tells us what danger those preachers pose unto the community. The community of believers and the community of unbelievers because the unbelievers that do not actually go to any church on Sunday they see it by their system and through internet they worship with those people whatever they say is what those people know and of course their church members too is second Timothy chapter 2 second Timothy chapter 2 I'm reading here from verse 17. 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 17. And their word will eat as does a canker, gangrene, of whom is Hymenaeus and Philetus, who concerning the truth have erred saying that the resurrection is past already and overthrow the face of some overthrow the face of some they overthrow the face of the people that believe them that's why it says we as preachers and we as pastors should test the spirits try the spirits examine the spirits to see whether they abide in the word of God or not. And if they are not abiding in the word of God, number one, for you to stop listening to them. For you to stop checking up on the internet, on the YouTube, what have they said? What have they preached? Oh, you say, but I know the truth. Let's say, for example, you are healthy and sound. And you are drinking water from a pipe that is corroded, a pipe that is poisoned. And the water goes through that pipe. Although the pipe and the water may be coming from a clean source, that is the Bible. And the Bible is pure, seven times purified and pure. But that word is coming through a corroded pipe is coming through faulty pipe and is coming through rusty pipe is coming through poison pipe by the time the water gets to you it will do you harm and the harm it does doesn't kill instantaneously little by little by little the truth you know will be eroded and then evil things will happen the Lord will preserve you. The Lord will protect you. But you also must take caution that you don't listen to them. Look at Second Peter chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 1. But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you. There shall be, this is prophecy, there shall be, it is certain, false teachers among you who privily, privately shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that brought, that bought them and bring upon themselves swift destruction. And many shall follow the pernicious ways. They will deceive many. That's why. You want to protect your congregation, your local assembly, your local fellowship, so that all those people that have devastating influence as active preachers, active servants, active, active proclaimers, active interpreters of the word of God, they do not corrupt you, they do not corrupt your congregation. Many shall follow their pernicious ways, by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of, and through covetousness shall they with faint words make merchandise of you. Many of them will ask for money. 
they will ask for your tithes and offering. They will ask for your sowing the seed. They will ask for your contribution. After you have had this, they want you to make them like your personal mentor. They want you to make them like the personal leader and the personal teacher and they tell you how to contribute and what to contribute. They want to make merchandise of you. They want to get rich out of you. If you are poor, they promise you that we are going to be prospered. They pro promise many other people like that before you. And yet, all those poor people are poorer now and they are becoming richer. That's what Paul's prophets do. And that is what all these people that say they are preaching the gospel, but they say they will preach the gospel, they are not going to be poor, they are going to be rich, they are going to be here and there. They will not make use of you like a commodity. Are you hearing you? Through covetousness shall they within words make merchandise of you, whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. You know, they don't think they're going to be judged. They think they're above the law. They think they're above the scriptures. They think they're above judgment. But the word of God says they will be judged. While you test other people, while you examine other people, Examine yourself too. Try yourself too. Are you standing on the word of God? Are you standing up to the law and to the testimony? Are you speaking according to this word? Uh, Psalm 139. Psalm 139. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. The apostle said, try the spirits. You start with yourself. Try me and know my thoughts. And see if there be any wicked way in me. And lead me in the way everlasting. Point number two now. Recognizing the discerned identities of assigned stewards. Assigned stewards, stewards that have been assigned to the work of the Lord, recognizing, discerning, differentiating the spirit that works in them. You know, many times some people who even are preachers, pastors, assigned stewards, they get used to the work they're doing. And they do not recognize, they do not discern the spirit that works in them. Luke chapter 9. In Luke chapter 9, I'm reading from verse 54. Luke chapter 9, verse 54. And when his disciples James and John saw this, they said, Lord, wilt thou that we command fire? To come down from heaven and consume them as the liars did. These were apostles. These were the direct disciples of Christ. These were the people that have heard that Jesus told them, Follow me. Take my yoke upon you. Learn of me as you travel. As you travel, as you work, as you preach, as you act out your assignment, learn of me. Now, John and James, James and John said, Would you permit us, command us, that we command fire to come down from heaven and consume them? Even as Elias did. Look at verse 55. But he turned and rebuked them and said, Ye know not what manner of spirit ye are of. Ye know not the kind of spirit that wants to work in you. 
ye know not the spirit influencing you now, wanting you to call down fire upon the people because you don't agree with them, because you don't appreciate what they have done to me or what they are doing to me. Because of that, you are opening the door for a spirit, a kind of spirit different from my spirit to work in you. We must examine that and we must recognize and discern the identity of the spirit that is trying to work in us and in others. First John chapter 4. We're reading from verse 3. And every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. This is that spirit of Antichrist. The spirit of Antichrist works in many people, many preachers, many proclaimers, many people who say they are stewards of the mysteries of the kingdom of God. This is that spirit of Antichrist whereof ye have heard that it shall come and even now is already in the world. Even now it is already in the world. The spirit contrary to Christ, the spirit that is not of Christ, the spirit that is not the Holy Spirit that energizes people, influences people, and make them to do things and say things that is not according to the word of God, even though they remain their abide on the pulpit. And the pulpit belongs to Christ, and the church belongs to Christ, and the flock, the fold belongs to Christ, and yet they stand there, and they cannot discern, they cannot detect, they cannot tell what kind of spirit is working in them. The spirit of Antichrist behaves and acts and has a lot of other spirits with other names that will influence people. And you recognize that. Look at Osea chapter 5. Osea chapter 5. I'm reading from verse Four. Osea chapter 5 verse 4 They will not frame their doings to turn unto their God For the spirit of Adams is in the midst of them And they, know not, and they have not known the Lord Sometimes you hear Either you are reading the news over the internet or you're reading the news in the papers, or you're getting the news from many other sources. This one is a pastor and defiles his own daughter. This one is a pastor and has defiled even an unbeliever outside. This one is a pastor and he has messed up with a woman and hurt the woman and wanted to kill the woman so that that information will never come out. It's the spirit of Adam, the spirit of immorality, there's the spirit of infirmity, and there's a spirit of indecency, and there's a spirit of defilement, there's a spirit of Adam that walks in them. And there are people that have the spirit of covetousness that walks in them and Whatever they are preaching, whatever they are doing, their eyes are on their covetousness, or their eyes are on women, or if they are women, their eyes are on men, the spirit of boredom. And uh, after something has happened like that, they may cry some crocodile tears, and then they will go back to the same mess and the same defilement again. I pray such a spirit will not walk in you. Look at Romans chapter, chapter 8. 
chapter 11 rather. Romans chapter 11. And I'm reading from verses 7 and 8. Romans chapter 11 verse 7. What then? Israel has not obtained that which he seeketh for. But the election have obtained it, and the rest were blinded. Verse 8, according as it is written, God has given them, as permitted, the spirit of slumber, eyes that they should not see, ears that they should not hear. Unto this day, the spirit of slumber, they are dull in their spirit. They are dull in their heart. They are dull in their conscience. They are dull when they read the Bible. They'll be sleeping. They pray, they'll be sleeping. And when they even come to the place where the word of God is preached, the word cannot penetrate. Their eyes are closed. Their minds are closed. They have the spirit of slumber. And yet they will go out and preach. They go back to their church and preach. There is no understanding of the scripture, yet they preach. Their ears are dull of hearing, yet they preach. Their hearts are seared with, uh, in their conscience, yet they preach. And if you ask them, why did you interpret that verse that way? They cannot tell. They don't have any clue. They just reach and say whatever comes out of their mouth. We're looking at Acts chapter 16. Acts chapter 16, recognizing the discerned identities in assigned stewards. We're looking at Acts chapter 16, verse 16. And it came to pass as we went to prayer. We went to prayer. We are pray, going for prayer meeting. We are going for night vigil. We are going for, to a place. We are going to worship God. And all the children of God are gathering together. It's a prayer meeting. A certain damsel possessed with a spirit of divination. A spirit of divination met us. Which brought her master's much gain by sooth saying, sooth saying, you might not have realized that Balaam was a soothsayer. He was, uh, uh, he was saying, I'm going to keep to the word of God, and it's only the word of God I will, uh, I will say. Anything different from the word of God that I will not say. Put your finger in Acts chapter 16 and come to Joshua chapter 13. Joshua chapter 13. And I'm reading from verse 22. Balaam also, the son of Baal, the soothsayer. Balaam, the soothsayer. Balaam, the soothsayer. Did the children of Israel slay? with the sword among them that was slain by them. There are people like Balaam, they give testimonies, I was in a trance, they give testimonies, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, and they give testimonies, whatever I say will come to pass. If I curse anyone, that person is cursed. If I bless anyone, that person is blessed. And actually, he wanted to curse the children of Israel. But God changed the curse into a blessing. Every curse in your life, every curse against your life, will turn to a blessing in Jesus' name. Come back now to Acts chapter 16, verse 16. And it came to pass... As we went to prayer, a certain damsel possessed with a spirit of divination met us, which brought her master's much gain by so saying, verse 17, the same followed Paul and us and cried, saying, These men are the servants of the Most High God, which show unto us the way of salvation. 
you, you should understand this. If somebody has been operating with the spirit of divination before he comes to a particular church, and then he comes to that church, he hears the word of God, and he does not fully repent. He does not, re he maybe he repented of drinking or smoking or this and that, but he didn't see the spirit of divination as any problem. Because that spirit of divination had been saying what was apparently right. These are the servants of God, of the Most High God, that show us the way of salvation. That person does not repent of that. He joins the church. They baptize him or her in water. And he continues just like that. And any time something happens, he recollects what he used to do and what she used to say. And he opens his mouth and he says to them, and he says, I have the gift of, of the Spirit. Whereas it is the same old Spirit that had not been cast out, that is still operating in him or in her. You find some people, they have been speaking a kind of tongues before they were born again. And they were speaking that kind of tongue in that old church, I can't say Pentecostal church, Spiritist church, syncretic church. And now they come and uh, they have repented of all other things. Sanctification is not definite, they are not totally purged. And now they hear about Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, and uh, the person teaching them says, just open your mouth and don't worry what comes out, just say whatever comes out. The same old thing they have been saying before they were born again, apparently, born again, they open their mouth, they begin to talk the same gibberish. And they say they have the Holy Ghost. And they continue like that. And the spirit of divination is energizing them or working in them. It will not happen to you. First Timothy chapter 4. I'm reading from verse 1. First Timothy chapter 4. We're reading from verse 1. Now the spirit speaketh expressly. That in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, given he to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. There are people who backslide and they leave the church where conviction will come upon them. And they go to a place where they say they have the spirit, but the seducing spirit. And they're preaching doctrines of the devil. Doctrines inspired by the devil. And they go there. And the first time they get there, they might feel, is this right? Could this be right? But eventually they get adjusted. Now in verse 2, speaking lies in hypocrisy. Having their conscience seared with a hot iron. I pray God will deliver us from everything like that in Jesus' name. Are you saying a good amen? But you must discern, discern. Because if you don't discern, you'll just go on with that spirit of Antichrist. Not only that, you disallow, disallow. You silence the spirit. If it's in yourself, you silence that spirit. If in the private while you are praying, nothing wants to come upon you and will throw you down. And you, you control yourself in the church, in the midst of the people of God, but at home, in the private, the thing will throw you down. And then you'll be talking some things, you will disallow. You will disregard. If there's anybody that is having that kind of spirit, the spirit of the Antichrist and the spirit of Adam, 
and the spirit of immorality and the spirit of covetousness or the spirit that will make merchandise of anyone you disregard the spirit you deny the spirit you dissociate yourself you separate yourself from that kind of spirit you disclaim that spirit you disappoint the people who are into that spirit that evil spirit will not walk in you evil power will not walk in you point number three renouncing all damnable involvement with antichrist spirit renouncing all damnable involvement with the antichrist spirit already the word of god has uh, revealed to us in first john chapter 4 reading from verse 3 that there is the spirit of the antichrist and the apostle said even now already it is in the world Look at that verse again, 1 John chapter 4, verse, verse 3. And every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. This is that spirit of Antichrist, whereof ye have heard that it should come. And even now, already is age in the world. First John chapter 2, reading from verse 18. Little children, it is the last time. And as ye have heard that Antichrist should come, even now are there many Antichrists whereby we know it is the last time the apostle by revelation tells us even now there are many people who are agitated by the spirit of the antichrist activated by the spirit of the antichrist they are moved and propelled by the spirit of the antichrist second john chapter one I'm reading from verse 7, 2 John chapter 1, verse 7. For many deceivers are entered into the world who confess not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. This is a deceiver and an antichrist. Third time all over, the apostle uses the title for them. And there, if anyone is involved with that kind of spirit, there's damnation. I pray you will not be involved. I said you will not be involved. You will not be damned with the Antichrist in Jesus' name. Now the spirit of the Antichrist, how does that operate? We're looking at Deuteronomy chapter 18. Deuteronomy chapter 18. I'm reading from verse 9. Deuteronomy chapter 18 verse 9. When thou art come into the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, thou shalt not learn to do after the abominations of those nations. There shall not be found among you anyone that maketh a son or his daughter to pass through the fire. There are people that use hypnotism. And there are people that use mind psychology. There are people that use esoteric methods. Going beyond your mind and going behind your mind and to read what you are thinking and they do that with mind over matter methods it's not of god it's satanic and it says in that situation they can put themselves in any mode of thinking that makes them to go through fire and they say they don't feel it or that uses divination or an observer of times 
or an enchanter, or a witch, or a charmer, or a consulter with familiar spirits, or a wizard, or a necromancer, for all that do these things are an abomination unto the Lord. And because of these abominations, the Lord thy God does drive them out from before thee. Thou shalt be perfect with the Lord thy God. Be totally free from those things. And it says, for all these nations which thou shalt possess, hearken unto observers of times and unto diviners. But as for thee, the Lord thy God has not permitted, has not allowed, has not suffered thee so to do. Actually, the consequence is very great. First Chronicles chapter 10. First Chronicles chapter 10. We're reading from verse 13. First Chronicles chapter 10. Reading from verse 13. So Saul died for his transgression, which he committed against the Lord, even against the word of the Lord which he kept not, and also for asking counsel of one that had a familiar spirit to inquire of it. Saul, a king in Israel, the first king in Israel, he lost touch with God. And he lost touch so much that when he was going to the final battle, he wanted to know, Will he succeed? Will he come back home safe? Will he defeat the enemy? Will he conquer? And the Lord will not answer him. And instead of repenting, or what brought him to that conclusion, or to that condition, he sought from the witch of Endor that he will have information by evil spirits. And in verse 14, and inquired not of the Lord. Therefore, he slew him and turned the kingdom unto David, the son of Jesse. There are people that are too eager to have power. And they want to manifest power, drive out sickness and do this and do that. And eventually, because they are not quickly getting to where they want to get to, they consult with familiar spirit. They consult with spirits of necromancer. And they consult with the spirit of divination. And they want power by all means. Even if the power is coming from Satan, through the Antichrist, and through the spirit of evil, they just want the power. If you die in that condition, that's hellfire, express way to hellfire. You will not perish. Better to get saved, get restored, and know the Lord. Even if there's no other power but the power to live above sin, that will be enough. But even then, the promise is unto you and to your children. And to them that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call, but seeking power from the wrong source and seeking revelation and vision from the wrong source will cause backsliding, apostasy, and being lost forever. Second Kings chapter 1. Second Kings chapter 1. I'm reading from verse 1. Then Moab rebelled against Israel after the death of Ahab. And Ahaziah fell down through a lattice in his upper chamber. And that was in, that was in Samaria. And he was sick. 
and he sent messengers and said unto them, Go, inquire of Beelzebub, the God of Ekron, whether I shall recover of this disease. There are people, they get sick. And after getting sick, they pray, pray a little, have hearted prayer, a kind of prayer that doesn't stand firmly on the promise of God. And they have two minds. If God doesn't heal me, then I look for an alternative. And then they consult the regular medical practice. And maybe they have not gotten well in two, three days. They're expecting an immediate result. Whereas that those pills or the medicine will take some time to take effect. But they decide they're going to go to the God of Ekron, the God of the world. They're going to go to all those places where there is false miracle. And if they do that, look at verse 3. But the angel of the Lord said unto Elijah the Tishbite, Arise, go up to meet the messengers of the king of Samaria. And say unto them, Is it not because there is not a God in Israel? That she go to inquire of Beelzebub, the God of Ekron? Now therefore, thus says the Lord, Thou shalt not come down from that bed on which thou art gone up, but shall surely die. And Elijah departed. You can read the whole thing yourself. You see what came on him. You will not die in the shrine of the herbalist. I will not die in the shrine of the herbalist. Some time ago, there was uh, somebody who claimed to be a member of Deep Alive, perhaps even a worker in Deep Alive. And then he had been having some challenge. And he went to a particular place where they say that they're performing some backyard miracles. And when he got there, Maybe because of the dressing, because of the appearance of himself and the wife, the man there began to ask them question. I said, come out here. And he came out. And to the glare of all the people there said, this man is from deep alive. And then they publicized him and said where he's coming from. Do you see now that what we're doing here is of note, is of importance? And then after saying all that and using him to publicize evil, then they did all their whatever they used to do there for him. And he came out miserable, dejected, and he was still having his sickness. I hope he has, rest he has been restored now because if not, if he dies in that condition, that will be hellfire. You will not go to such places in Jesus' name. They say, come and look at one of Kumuyi's children. He was not able to help him. And now they have run here. That's wrong. How do you know I'm not able to help them? They didn't contact me. They didn't call me. I prayed for people over the phone. And even people as far away as in America. There was somebody that had, you know, uh, cancer. And it was about dying. Just this uh, last month, October, almost two months ago. And then the pastor there called me and said, Okay, go to the hospital and use your phone. And when you get there, call me on phone. And then he called me and I prayed. And the second day, that person was discharged. So the power is still there. That power will touch your life. You will not go to the shrine of the people that will publicize you and they publicize you for nothing. And you don't get anything. You will get. Over here, you will get. 
power will not fail on your life in Jesus name you will live out your days you will not die prematurely and even if there is nobody to pray with you do like Hezekiah and turn your face to the wall and tell the Lord oh Lord I will not die I will live remember this remember this i'm your servant i'm serving you and i want to serve you more give me life it might add 15 years to your long life we're looking at revelation chapter 16 revelation chapter 16 and i'm reading from verse 13. revelation chapter 16 we're reading from verse 13 and i saw three unclean spirits spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophet for they are the spirits of devils walking miracles see that they are the spirits of devils walking miracles they which go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to battle of the great day of God Almighty. Evil spirits in those false prophets walking in miracles. You'll not be partaker of miracles from an evil source in Jesus' name. Revelation chapter 19. Reading from verse 20, and the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet which wrought miracles. The false prophet which wrought miracles before him, with that with which he deceived them which received the mark of the beast, and them that worshipped the image. These both were cast alive into where? Into where? Into a lake of fire which burneth with brimstone. We don't need all those false lying miracles. We have the Spirit of God. We have the power of God. And that power of God will walk mightily in every one of our lives in Jesus' name. Point number four now, reclaiming the dynamic impact of anointed saints. Reclaiming the dynamic impact of anointed saints. We're coming to First John chapter 4. I'm reading from verse 4. First John chapter 4, verse 4. Ye of God, little children, and have overcome them. Any overcomer in the house today? The Lord confirm it to your life. Ye of God, little children, and have overcome them. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world who has greater power i said who has greater power you or false prophets you or beelzebub you or those false prophets i said who has greater power you have the greater power and look at something here look at first samuel chapter 5 for Samuel chapter 5 greater you see that is in you greater you see that is in me for Samuel chapter 5 verse 1 and the Philistines took the ark of God and brought it from Ebenezer unto Ashdod and when the Philistines took the ark of God they brought it into the house of Dagon and set it by Dagon. Greater is he with that ark than with Dagon. 
Do you, you need to understand that one. I said, greater you see with that ark than whoever was behind Dagon. Look at verse 3. And when the day of Ashdod arose early on the morrow, be, behold, Dagon was falling upon his face to the earth before the ark of the Lord. And they took Dagon and set him in his place. And when they arose early on the morrow morning, behold, Dagon was falling upon his face to the ground before the ark of the Lord. And the head of Dagon and both the palms of his hands were cut off upon the threshold. Only the stump of Dagon was left to him. The point is, there was no priest with that ark. There was no high priest with that ark. Just the ark by itself. And God wrought wonders. And Dagon, the idol of the Ashdodites, fell down. And you, even if all the other brethren are not with you, anywhere you are, Christ in you, the Holy Ghost in you, power in you, faith that cannot fail in you, even if you have not fasted, even if you have not done anything, the greater one in you will destroy every Dagon in Jesus' name. I want you to see Acts chapter 5. Acts chapter 5. Look at what happened here. And we're reading from verse 14. Acts chapter 5. Reading from verse 14. And the believers were, believers were the more added to the Lord. Multitudes, both of men and women, in so much that they brought forth the sick into the streets and laid them on beds and couches that at the least the shadow of Peter passing by might overshadow some of them. Shadow of Peter. If the shadow of Peter brought miracles, your personality, your person will bring miracle. And they, there came also a multitude of the city round about unto Jerusalem, bringing sick folks and them that were vexed with unclean spirit. Tell me what follows. And they were healed, everyone shadow of Peter just passing by and then all the sick that were brought they were healed everyone a new day has come a new time has come the greater spirit in you will work wonders in Jesus name Acts chapter 19 I'm reading from verse 11. Acts chapter 19, verse 11. And God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul. It will happen to you. It will happen through you. Put your name. Now Paul is gone. You are the one here. And God will work special miracles by the hand of it will happen in Jesus' name. So that from his body were brought unto the sick handkerchiefs or aprons. And the diseases departed from them and the evil spirits went out of them. That greater power will walk in your life. Will walk through your body. Failure is gone. Disappointment is gone. Second Kings 
chapter 13 second kings chapter 13 verse 20 and elisha died don't let that surprise you after he had finished his ministry after he had walked and walked and walked elisha died and they buried him and the bands of the Moabites invaded the land at the coming of the year. And it came to pass, as they were burying a man who died, obviously, that behold, despite a bunch of men, and because they wanted to run away from the band of men, they cast the dead man into the sepulchre of Elisha. And when the man was let down and touched the bowls of Elijah, he revived and stood up on his feet. As our amen gone away, Elisha, even after his death, and they buried him, and the grave was like an open grave. And they saw that dead man, they were carrying. When they saw a band of men, they dropped the man inside that sepulchre. And then, without any prayer, Elijah did not wake, Elisha did not wake up. His bones, the power, the remnant of power that he had when he was alive. Now that he was dead, that dead man touching that bone revived and got up. If the remnant of the power on the dead bones of Elisha raised up the dead, the spirit you have is not remnant. The power you have is not a remnant. The authority you have is not a remnant. And the faith you have is not a remnant. Something great will happen through you. Ye of God, little children, anyone of God here tonight? Anyone of God here tonight? Brother, are you of God? Answer, sister, are you of God? Ministers, are you of God? Ye of God, and ye have overcome them. You will overcome every evil power, every evil thing that comes against your life or family in Jesus' name. Because because read it now because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world greater is he that is in you where is he where is she greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world Every power of evil will collapse before you in Jesus' name. Rise up as giants in the ministry. Rise up as giants of faith. Rise up as giants of exploits. That you know, all those uh, evil spirits, satanic spirits, antichrist spirits, they will not find a way in your life. But your life, your word, your touch, your clothes, your shadow will begin to perform miracles. Accept it. The promise is unto you and to your children and to your converts and to many that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. You are more than a conqueror from today. Hold on to that. Accept that. Believe that. It will happen through you.